So on today's uh, evening lecture, we'll be talking about some aspects of head injury. Not all the aspects because head injury per se would become a very vast subject. So what would be of use in terms of knowledge and what would also be in use in terms of answering some specifically targeted questions about head injury and its management. So we talk about the basics of head injury in this lecture. Etiology, anything which causes a severe impact on the head or brain will result in brain injury or head injuries. The commonest reason in India and maybe anywhere in elsewhere in the world are road traffic accidents, falls from height in India of course it is uh, falls from trees also which may not happen in the western world, assaults are common everywhere, sporting injuries though not very common in India but mostly associated with motor racing, with boxing, with impact injuries like contact sports, football, they are all etiological factors for giving rise to head injuries. Sometimes we have repeated head injuries as in some contact sports and then they lead to long term repercussions which are not seen early on at the time of impact. Namely, a person can get a, par a Parkinsonism at a younger age group of say around 50 years old if he has been a boxer in his early days or he has been an avid football player or maybe a quarterback in, uh, in a rugby player who uh, takes in a lot of impact, even they are persons who are prone to chronic brain damages and the sequelae that can manifest as certain dementias, Parkinsonisms, etc. in older age. And of course, then there are gunshot and penetrating injuries, which are a different variety altogether and will have to be dealt with as a separate subject, mostly found or they are also known as war injuries. So what exactly happens when there is an impact on the brain? Any impact anywhere is transference of energy from what is producing the impact to the object of that impact. In this particular case, it is the head and the head comprises of the skull and the brain. So moment there is impact on the skull, the energy wave goes on to the skull and then transmits through the skull and onto the brain. Now this is a very important aspect. The amount of energy that dissipated during the impact on the skull is the one which will then allow the rest of it to go and impact the brain. So when we have an energy onto the skull and whatever is left from that point of impact and energy dissipation on the skull goes to the inner innards of the brain that is the periosteal layer, the endosteal layer, the dura matter, the dura, the pia, the brain surface, the blood vessels and deeper structures of the brain. So the impact travels from outside to inside and at each level the energy starts declining. For example, if an impact happens on the skull and the skull fractures, it is the fracture itself which is a defense mechanism. The fracture takes away a lot of energy and the energy going into the brain is far less. So when you come across a person with a head injury with a fracture, then chances are that a lot of impact energy has been taken and absorbed by the skull itself and that the brain has been protected to a great degree. So a fracture actually is not a bad sign. Fracture it actually can mean that the brain itself has been saved to some degree. So a skull fracture can happen in a linear manner, can be a bad kind of a fracture, here it's a linear impact with an open fracture, that is there is disruption of the skin and the fracture underlined, or it can be a depressed fracture that the fracture goes and impacts the skull from inside. But in all these fractures, the energy has been dissipated, especially in a depressed fracture where most of the energy has been dissipated in causing this depression and destruction of the bone. And lot less energy has penetrated into the brain, so thus saving the brain. The question then arises is, what do we do about this depressed fracture? Management of depressed fracture is a separate subject by altogether, but the thing to be understood here is that whenever there is a fracture or depression onto the brain, the impact of the fracture itself 
or the injury to the brain has happened at the time of the impact and continued pressure by the bone fragment may not be adding too much to the injury. However, the general rule and the general consensus is that any depression which has got a pointed bony spicule or any depression where you suspect that the dura has been ruptured or any depression where you have an overlying breach of the, of the scalp, they are the ones which need to be operated, the fragments brought up and settled up and the brain structure and the contours of the brain to be maintained. Of course, if you find a dural breach inside, you stitch away the dura and then you restore the normal anatomy of the brain. However, there is another school of thought which says that all depressed fractures should be aggressively managed and even those fractures which are not more than the thickness of the vault itself. Normally, anything more than the thickness of the vault inside is recommended to be elevated or removed or repositioned. However, some people say that even a minor depression should be taken care of and contours should be restored because what the theory behind this is that a pulsating brain continues to pulsate against a depressed segment and thus brain being a softer structure is the one which is prone to scarring and once it gets scarred, once it gets scarred, it is prone to producing seizures and other problems that relate to it. So those are the kind of fractures which then need to be elevated and removed. So what happens at the time of impact to the brain? Irrespective of the amount of impact which is taken away by the bone, some of the impact and some of the energy dissipation happens on the brain. If the energy is significant enough, the first thing it does is it causes depolarization of the neurons. And it is the polarized neurons which are responsible for our level of consciousness and our being conscious. That is the small light bulbs which are lit up all the time and the lit up light bulbs are the one which represent our consciousness. Moment all these, all the neurons become depolarized, these small light bulbs that are there, they stop lighting up and it's all darkness and that is what results in concussion or unconsciousness of various degrees. Concussion may be without, conscious, without loss of consciousness, may be with loss of consciousness, rendering a patient unconsciousness, unconscious or of course if the impact is very severe and the energy imparted to the brain is severe, then the unconsciousness can go beyond the realms of un, uh, concussion and can become a disruptive uh, brain function resulting in prolonged unconsciousness. So what happens during injury? To summarize it, the pathophysiology itself is that there is a primary brain, brain injury which happens at the time of impact. Now this happens in the first few milliseconds to first few seconds only. That is the energy wave comes to the brain, to, uh, come to the skull, the energy dissipates on the skull itself and then it penetrates to the brain, rendering the brain as a source of damage and depolarization and a person becomes unconsciousness. And then the same energy, depending on the severity of the energy, can cause mechanical damage to the brain itself. And this mechanical damage will depend on the amount of energy that the brain has suffered as a result of the impact. And then the mechanical damage may be cellular in nature which may recover or it may be much more severe causing disruption of the blood vessels, causing bleeding within the brain, causing secondary changes into the brain or ca and causing disruption of the neurons and the axons leading to a more permanent brain damage. And these are result in cerebral contusions which are visible as hemorrhagic areas within the brain or they can be severe impacts can be diffuse shearing injuries to the brain, the diffuse axonal injuries which may not be visible on a on a CT scan but are every bit and even more dangerous to the skull because this DAI usually represents those areas of the brain which have been impacted by the energy wave which has gone on, crossed the skull and hit, impacted the brain primarily. So the brain has not had a time to, res to respond to these injuries or to these impacts and the whole brain suffers as a consequence and there is a major sharing stress onto all aspects and the, all areas of the brain giving rise to severe prolonged loss of consciousness. Both cerebral contusions and lacerations, they cause disruption of the physical quantum or the physical part of the brain and thus resulting in focal impacts, focal damages and the energy levels or the energy dissipation happens on a more focal nature 
than on a global nature. The global dissipation happens resulting in diffuse axonal injuries. So <clears throat> we classify injuries as concussion, contusions, lacerations as a common in common parlance and of course then there is associated hematoma formation. So what is concussion? Concussion is defined as temporary and brief interruption of neurological function after minor injury. Minor injury because it only leads to depolarization of the neurons without causing any physical damage or permanent damage to the neurons or the axons. Now due to shearing and stretching of the white matter at the time of the impact, there is only temporary neural dysfunctions. What can it result in? It can result in mild headaches to severe headaches. A person may be confused or may be amnestic to the event itself. Now these are all grades of concussion. CT and MRI usually cannot detect concussion. Of course, nowadays we've got uh, special sequence MRIs of different nature, which can detect grade two and grade three concussions, but not grade one concussion. So concussions are of different grades. There are grade three concussions, grade one, two, and three. One is where the symptoms of concussion last only for less than 15 minutes. And after that, the person does not show, does not have anything to show for the energy. And there's only a bit of confusion in those uh, 15 minutes. And the person is alert. Now, you must have seen nowadays when you're watching cricket, some of you which watch cricket, when the ball impacts the head, the somebody from the medical fraternity comes and examines the player. And this is just to make sure that the concussion is not there. And if you find that the player is confused, then he's not allowed to play any further, even if the confusion will last for less than five minutes. But the very fact that the impact has caused confusion renders him unfit for that moment of time or that particular point of time to take decisions and to be able to perform normal tasks. This has come into realms of reality only now that we have realized that even concussions can have an impact on the functioning of an individual. Grade two, the symptoms last for more than 15 minutes. Although the person has not lost consciousness, he remains amnestic for the event that has happened. And grade three is when along with an impact there is a consciousness which is lost, although it is only transient because anything more than transient loss of consciousness falls out of realms of concussion and then it becomes contusion or laceration or diffuse external injury or prolonged unconsciousness, but no longer a simple concussion.